Hey guys, today I'm going to be walking you through how to make game ready textures for your characters. There's three different methods, so you can choose which one actually suits you. So you get more options, you can actually change depending on like what sort of style, what kind of needs you have for your character's textures. So let's go. Okay, so the first method I'm going to talk about is called the UV Atlas, which is basically the easiest way of doing textures if you have flat textures like this character over here. Okay, and the reason we have to do this is basically because when you have a bunch of materials like this, working with them inside of a game engine is a nightmare. You have a bunch of like, if you have a full environment, you're gonna have like thousands of materials. If you're a bunch of characters, again, a lot of materials, and it's also not very efficient. So what we can do is have one material and just have a image with a bunch of little pixels with different colors. And let me show you kind of an example of what that would look like. All right, so something like this. And this can either be used, like you can make your own one. So you just take a, go to some sort of image painting software and then just change each color of the pixels, uh, like something like this. Um, if I pull it onto my screen, you see here, like this is a 64 by 64. And if each pixel is one color, like this is how big thing. So you can fit, like if you do the math, 64 times 64, you can fit a lot of colors on here and that can fit like your entire game's colors. And then all you have to do is just update this one image, you just go like change the color one pixel and it'll change the whole color for every single material, which is quite uh, nice. So the, the easy way to set this up is if you have some sort of image like this, um, or you have your own image that you've created, is basically just as you're working. So like if you have a material, you can just go select, uh, then just go U and let's go maybe like Q projection or something and then just scale it down and then move it onto like whatever pixel and then you go through and kind of choose you go through each of those and kind of do the exact same thing um, with all of them and then once you've got all the materials like done this is only if you're swapping over if you start from the beginning then you don't really have to do um, this part of like selecting all the colors you can just go from the beginning um, just go through and get all your colors done. And then if I go here and change this, so I get rid of this material and go new and then go here, click on this little uh, yellow dot, go image, there are, and then open this color palette uh, there. And then we change this here to texture so we can actually see the colors. You can see here, some of these parts have been transferred over. And just to make sure that we don't have any like bugs if we haven't set it up correctly change this from flat uh, not, not, uh, linear to closest um, that'll just make sure that if you have any like pieces on the edge of the pixels won't like blend between them um, but yeah so then you can see like there's parts that we haven't obviously done so we actually have to still do these um, and add them to the thing but you can see we just like select part of our mesh like this and then we go u uh, q projection scale this down and then find a color that works and there you go it's now working fine um and then we just have to go through our whole character and do the same thing and that is the the way of doing cube projection or the the uv atlas and that is method one so let's go into the second method if you don't be working with flat textures like this okay the second method is doing something like this, where you actually paint the textures for your character. And this can be done on, so like here, yeah, you can see I've kind of have like pixelated textures. Um, you can see that's kind of like what the, the style is going for here. And that's why I was if we change the, the textures to flat, but you obviously don't have to do that. You can make it high resolution textures and get all it done. Um, this is quite an easy method because all you have to do is learn some very basic painting tools. Um, set up a UV map, which I do have a tutorial posted last week on how to do, or oh, actually, I would, sorry, I'll put, I'm posting next week on how to do UV maps and I have a bunch of old ones. Um, but yeah, you have to get your UV maps done. So you can see here, this whole character is laid out flat so I can paint the textures on. I go texture paint. Um, and you can see here, ah, uh, okay. So here yeah, I'm in texture paint view and you can see here, um, you basically can choose here, you have color palettes. So if you open this tab, you can click plus and it'll add a color to it, um, which is because nice then you can have like presets on what you're working with. Uh, so you don't get like confused and like um, 
started working with problems. Uh, I think I might have some texture painting tutorials, but you guys can just look up your own. Um, and this is very useful to work with color palettes because you can, like, if you're working on, like, the main, like, blouse, you need to, like, paint a part uh, and you want to, like, cover it up. So you can see I have this exact, um, like, texture, the color um, saved in here. And you can just work with them. You can reorganize them if you want and stuff like that. Or you could just have multiple for different parts of the character. Um, and it's a very easy thing. And as well, if another method of doing this, especially if you have like a PS1 character or something, is you can even take a texture and use that to paint on top of your character, which is very uh, a very easy way of creating textures very quickly. Uh, so let me show an example of that. So to set up your textures, all you have to do, so go texture paint view, uh, go down to texture mask uh, or yeah, texture mask, go, is it? Go texture, go open, click here, click new, uh, go to the texture tab, go open, and then find an image. And then once you have your image in, so I'll just grab this random like picture of a t-shirt, change this from 3D to stencil, um, and then you can just go like image aspect or reset transform and then image aspect. Um, and you can see here, so like if I wanted a, a striped shirt, I could just kind of go here. Uh, and I'm going to change my color back to white because it'll like kind of paint over so whatever colors you have in your image. So if you wanted a, a red shirt, then you could do like that, uh, as you can see. Um, but I want a white shirt, so I'm going to go white. And then I can just go paint like that. And you can see there, I've got like a, a strap shirt done quite quickly. And then you can uh, control and right click, and then you can rotate it. So if you want the shirt, the sleeve to go this way, then you can do the exact same thing. And you can see there, um, yeah. And then obviously you have to like get it lined up and everything to paint through the other side, uh, or you can change some settings, but yeah, that's all going into a bunch more like about all the texture settings and stuff like that. But you can see that's a very quick way to set up textures and stuff on top of your, your characters. So I'm going to actually undo because I want to keep my original texture. Um, but yeah, that's a very quick and easy way of getting some cool, like, more stylized textures and not just flat colors. Another easy way of doing that is as well if you use the same method with the texture paint, but you have a gradient. To so use the gradient and then you kind of paint over your character. Um, and I think we can even do that, but yeah, if we just go change this, we change this from image movie to, and we change it over from there to blend. And uh, you can see this has a gradient now. Um, and then if you just go like put it over there um, on the arm, and we just go grab a color, so it may go like green. And you can see we can easily have a gradient on top of it. Um, so you can do that very easy to paint uh, stuff like that as well. You can, there's a whole bunch of things and yeah, it's really powerful and very easy way of like creating quite cool textures. If you are struggling with Blender and want to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me, check out the first link in the description and you can see more info there. Back to the video. Okay, so here's an example of the last method, which is creating procedural textures and if you look at this from the beginning, like this can look like a nightmare and look like way too much. But if you break it down, it actually ends up being quite simple. Um, and it's also mainly just because I'm terrible at organizing and these are basic nodes that anyone basically should know about kind of. So like literally here, I think this was like a custom thing that I learned how to do, which only actually works in cycles and I'm not in cycles, so it doesn't matter. Um, but basically just to get like an edge wear. Um, and then I'll probably have... I have like a couple of noise textures on here just to get like random uh, things. So you see allergies, it kind of covers here. When you have a bigger model, it kind of, you can see it more. Um, and then there's like ambient occlusion that will like show up on edges like this. Um, again, this work, that works a bit better if you bake it. Um, and then I, I kind of take it where I have like my main color for my uh, thing. So it's basically just a noise texture with a color ramp uh, and multiply. I think I was multiplying into a different color um, just to kind of change it slightly. Um, and then I have this, which is basically, I just take it. So this is actually for like the, the edges. So I kind of take a color and when it was in cycles, it actually works. Um, that would be for the edges. And then that mixes into the base color um, like this. And then I also have another one, which is just another noise texture with here. And then that plugs in here. And that's just for the edges. You can see it just goes dark on the edges like that. Um, and then I just have like a, a nice little bump here. Um, I just painted this. It's actually just an image I painted inside of like Affinity Designer or Photoshop or something. Um, so it's just an image like this. And then I kind of just like smoothed it slightly and then just mixed it. Um, 
but you see you can kind of start building up like a whole a whole texture just with some simple notes because like literally 80 percent of these are noise textures with color ramps and multipliers like more mixed notes um and that's all my texture is and then a couple like am inclusion and stuff like that um and that's like literally the entire node um but this also works more for props but if you're going to be creating uh weapons or if you're creating any sort of texture that's more complex creating a procedural one like this can be really nice and that's what i use if you check my portfolio um all the weapons i do are like completely procedural textures um yeah and it turns out quite well the only thing is you have to actually have good uvs and then start baking the textures which is actually a very simple process um all you have to do is have to have a image texture like that um and then you add a new image like there you go cycles it has to be in cycles view um change your samples to one because it bakes quicker um and then go bake change this from combine to uh diffuse check uh under direct and indirect that's you don't want that because that's lasting just have color um and then just go bake and then we wait i don't think i have uv so it's probably going to like fail or something um but let's see oh i think i just have way too many notes it's going to bake well with my pc because i have a slow pc but yeah that's basically what you can do to create some pretty cool textures um and all you have to do is just learn a bit about blender's nodes and you can also with that is start creating like your own masks like um if you do go to texture paint almost similar to having an image like uh this just create like different masks and stuff for different shapes or whatever um and you can use that to mix it in like you can have procedure ones um but you can also just have images that you paint directly on the model you can also use like vertex paints to kind of like section of parts of your model stuff like that um it's a whole thing just start looking into all the procedural generation of nodes and stuff um and then all you have to do is just bake your textures at the end um and you can bake the other ones you can also bake the the normal stuff like that uh but you can also just bake those to an image um and then that will get them ready for the game engine all right so if you want to create any of those textures you need to learn how to uv map correctly so click over here to watch a uv mapping tutorial right now see you next one